Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to another episode. All right, let's stop the fooling. So, hmm. Anyway, welcome to another episode of your English lessons. Yeah. Anyway, let's 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 jump right into it. So, the former episode or the last episode. It was like it was an episode it wasn't an episode i said it was a lesson it was not a lesson it didn't have a theme anyway with the intention let's allow it it's an episode you know what let's give it a pass it's an episode so that's our ninth episode so i have news we're going to be doing a 10th episode special like our our 10th episode is going to be something else and you're probably asking if that was the ninth episode why is this not the 10th episode well it's not this is the nine and three quarter quarter episode yeah so don't get confused it's basically our episode between the ninth episode and the tenth episode very simple we've already done the ninth episode we'll give it some episode and there's going to be a tenth episode special so now we are in in between the ninth and the tenth episode nine and three quarters episode don't worry, you understand. So, as part of it, this 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 episode, one thing we're going to be introducing now in these episodes of our episodes, episodes, sorry, our stuff. One thing we're going to be introducing introducing now in the episodes are one thing I used to do with I think the fifth and the sixth greatest one on campus before the virus, the pandemic hit, was every lesson we had a word of the day. And I'm going to reintroduce it because I feel like people learned a lot with that. And so I'm just going to reintroduce that. So every lesson or every episode from henceforth, we're going to have a word of the day. Just one word that you're supposed to add to your collection or to your vocabulary every single episode. That's going to be, you know, our word of the day, basically. So let's go. So today's word of the day is drama plays. Sorry. <laughs> Our word of the day is taco. Taco. Okay, taco. <laughs> well, don't mind me. Taco. All right, so let's get serious. A taco is a traditional Mexican dish consisting of a small hand sized corn or wheat tortilla topped with a filling. The tortilla is then folded around the filling and eaten by hand. Alright, don't get confused. It's a Mexican dish. So we're talking about food over here, alright? So what they do is they make a tortilla. So here's a really like a flat bread, alright? Like a like a thin flat bread like kind of thing. <laughs> alright. So it's a Mexican dish where they make a thin, very small hand sized, very small. You can just pick it with your, your hand like this or like that. And it's topped with filling. So I fill with chicken, with veggies, with avocado, with with anything. But it's really it's pretty small. And so then you fold the tortilla around the filling and you eat it with, with your hand. Basically, it's not a fork and knife dish. It's actually very nice. I have a picture for you so see how basically a taco is supposed to look like. Give me a second. Great. This is taco for you. See how delicious that is. Let me zoom in to make people hungry. Ah. <laughs> so that's basically what a taco looks like. Let me zoom out so you can see. That's basically what a taco looks like. So see how small and thin. It's basically like finger food. You can just pick one up. Really delicious. I've had one once. Oh, truthfully, I really have. It's, it's pretty delicious. So it's normally filled with chicken or some meat or whatever. And then probably some veggies. And then you see there's avocados and they have loads of options. So tacos are really nice. So basically, this is our way for the taco. It's a Mexican dish. Consists of a small hand sized corn or wheat tortilla topped with a filling. The filling is basically what you saw chicken and those kuku and kakis. So then, tortilla is folded around it and eaten by hand. So that's today's word of the day. So, let's jump right into the lesson. So, as I did with our word of the day, 
one thing we also introduced around i think the fifth or the sixth episode was themes every lesson that we're doing or every episode is going to have a theme something that the lesson is basically going to be about so we're going to have like a theme for the lesson so we've had desert treasures we've had fast food fun we've had being me we've had quite a lot and uh today's theme is rainy day fun rainy day fun so since our day is taco and the theme of our lesson is rainy day fun we have a dance break from out of the sky tacos no need to ask why just open your mouth song is finished sorry sorry all right so let's continue <laughs> so rainy day fun that's the theme of our lesson so let's go on all right last thing we did were verbs all right we we uh, basically did okay last time <laughs> we basically did sorry we basically did action verbs and helping verbs we took a look at all the helping helping verbs that we have like am um, is did could will where and we use them alongside action verbs in i think six or six or five sentences and there were seven seven sentences uh, to see how we use action verbs and helping verbs together all right because these are things that people normally misplace so that's basically what we did in the previous lesson what we're going to do today are basically verb tense forms so we've not gotten into it that much we're just going to take it bit by bit because anytime students hear verb tense forms they're like ah this past tense present tense actually it's not that difficult but you've been going at it way too much trying to consume too much at the same time so what we're going to do is we're going to tackle it one by one like very slowly very very easily all right let's go let's jump straight right into it so present tense verbs tell what's happening now we hear present tense we're talking about or when we say a verb is in this present tense we're talking about a verb that is describing something that is happening at that moment something or just let, let me just read the sentence so you can follow present tense verbs tell what's happening now based on that definition when we're talking about verbs in their present tense forms it's telling an action that is occurring at that time that's it when you hear present tense that's it let's move on when you hear past is past past tense verbs they tell an action or they tell what happened in the past don't try and like put everything you've learned about the verb tense forms aside and try and focus on this with a very open and a kind of blank take it with a blank sheet so we were basically literally starting the whole thing all together all right present tense verbs tell what's happening now past tense verbs <laughs> Say about no verbs. <laughs> past tense verbs tell what happened in the past. All right. So to change most action verbs, what we learned about action verbs are uh, uh, doing, jumping, um, 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 dancing, singing, run, drive. All these are action verbs. Yet, yet, yet they, they describe actions. So to change most action verbs into past tense, we add ed. Like I said, put this to the blank sheet. Treat this lesson as though you are now learning verb tense form, verb tense forms for the first time. To so change action verbs to past tense, we add ed. So I've given a typical example: jump, right? Jump, run, skate, dance. These are action verbs. To change them into a past tense, we add ed. Simple. You know, I'm I'm saying simple and all this, but take in mind that we're we are learning this not just for writing. But also to affect your speech when you're talking about action all right you see jump to jumped when you are you know speaking and this is a sentence and you're talking about someone or maybe a, a, an incident or something that happened in the past 
never forget to add ed if you are describing something that happened in the past like jump skit you know stuff like this all right so to change most action verbs to past tense I, i'm glad let's take notice of the word most underline very important most we're not talking about all action verbs I'm talking about all action verbs. Change most of the action verbs into past tense. We add ed. So we have jumped to jumped. Now, the being so great. So the being verbs are basically okay. So I don't know whether you guys remember it when we're learning. I think being me. So probably the eighth episode. So if you've forgotten, you might as well want to go to the eighth episode because I really explain what being verbs are. So they are verbs that we are verbs that describe action basically what i was talking about like jump run skating all that and we have verbs that describe state of being more like condition so to change being verbs to past tense we use either of these words the words that are down below am to was so we have a variety of words that you can use when we're changing verbs that in verbs that describe state of being into past tense don't worry we'll, we'll get into them just try and follow as we go all right so to change being verbs to past tense we use either of these words am to was are to where is there's already was there sorry sorry they've kind of repeated themselves <laughs> sorry i've just realized something give me a second okay so i've just discovered a giant typo okay it's not a typo just a big mistake i've made i just corrected it so formally this read to change being verbs to past tense we i think I, I think it said follow either of these or use either of these words but i figured out how it's supposed to work now sorry about that so i've, I've corrected it it's very simple so these are the being verbs in the past tense am um, was are where is and was all right so these are the pronouns that are applicable to either of these verbs stay with me it's very simple so am um, and was is applicable with i i am i was so these are the rules we follow because this thing is really tricky and a lot of people fall for it i am i was no other pronoun should go with am and was than I. No other pronoun. Take your time. Just, just, just observe. Then we have are and were. So we have you are, you are happy. You were happy. They are happy. They were happy. We have you over here. You are, you were. It makes sense. It's applicable. They are, they were makes sense app applicable so listen applicable <laughs> sorry so the being verbs is i think to truly understand the being verbs go to episode eight that's like two episodes ago you understand how we did how i explained being verbs they basically verbs either name actions or state of beings so these being verbs in they are here and they are past tense now these are the these are the rules you follow they are pronouns here. I. There's another pronoun here. You. They. We. And there's a. There's. <laughs> he. She. And it. Now I've grouped them in such a way that the pronouns that match the past tense verbs over here are the ones that you are supposed to use with those verbs and not any other. So I am. I was. You are. You were. They are. They were. We are. We were. He is. He was, she is, she was, it is, it was. We can never exchange this. Like she were playing or they was playing. It doesn't work like that. Study this thing really seriously. That's why I say if you don't understand anything, type in the comments or send uh, send me an email so I can take my time and explain this very well. Because this is a mistake I've heard not only like kids make in school, even adults make this mistakes with these things. So please take it very, very seriously. Okay, let's move on. So we have a test down here so read each sentence identify the verb then rewrite each sentence and change the verb to past tense 
there's one thing people find like r really difficult so you see i've matched the pronouns over here with the uh, the the verbs that they are applicable with we are going to use this over here to solve what's down here and this over here the action verb together with the being verbs to solve these eight you know sentences so what we're supposed to do we're supposed to identify the verb over here and we're supposed to rewrite the sentence and change the verb to past tense so It is raining. Now, the verb that we're going to concern ourselves, uh, concern ourselves with is the being verb over here is. We're changing the sentence in here to its past tense. So, this is how the sentence is about to read. We're concerning ourselves with, sorry, we're concerning ourselves with this, that the being verb is. So, this is how our sentence is going to read. It was raining. It was raining. Now, the extra, you know, observant ones over here will see that raining, despite the fact that it's ending with ing because it's been conjugated, raining is an action. So if we want to change that, and uh you know make it pass because raining is continuous that means it's still happening we're dealing with past and present so let me help you out here i know most of you have already observed this so let me help you out here despite the fact that it does not end with okay what does it say here yes so to change it to past tense we add ed now if you say I'm going to add ED to this, what's going to read? I'm not sure we can be able to pronounce it over here. The verb in here, the raw verb, is rain. So if we're going to change it into a past tense, if we're going to change it into a past tense, okay, you know what? I'm going to leave that to you. Because what I concern ourselves with are being verbs. So you know what? I'm not even gonna touch that. Let's let's work on what we came here to fix. So if you're going to do that, I think I should do that side of the lesson because we'll get to hard, has, could, couldn't, wool, would, and all of that. We'll get to that. I want us to focus on this. So you know what? Let's let's move on to the second one. Justin and Kelly splash in puddles. So the verb here is splash, and there's literally only one verb here, splash. So, splash is an action verb. So, to change that, we'll now make the sentence read Justin and Kelly splashed in puddles. Very simple. Very simple. So, we've done one, we've done two. Every time there's a, like a test like this on assignments, yes, I always do some of them for you. So, I'm not going to stop now, right? I'm a very kind person, as you can all know. <laughs> as you all know, I'm a very kind person. So, I've done question one and two. You have six sentences. Three, four, five, six. Oh, seven. Hey, wait, hold on. I've done two. So, this accounts in one, two, three, four, five, six. So, you have six sentences left to continue. That's it. That's basically it. That's all you have to do. That is all you have to do. Very simple. Very, very simple. So, as usual, this is your assignment. This is your assignment. I don't think I've given an assignment. I don't think I gave one in the past episode. Even in the next, the, the I think, even the eighth episode, I don't think I gave one. So, this is a very simple assignment. Come on, guys. Let's face it. It's just six sentences. You're just trying to six sentences and send it to my meal. That's all. That's it. So please take your time and then answer them. As usual, there's something you don't understand. Because this thing is really tricky, it all will get confused. You can always send an email or type in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next lesson. In the meantime, hmm, I think we need another raining tackles dance break. See you later. Bye.